Okay, I think it's recording. So, hello everyone, this is John here from the Kraken Clan. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that, it is uh, snowing hard out there. But, so here's the thing. I was on Instagram, and I got into some debates with some Roman Catholics on Instagram. And they were calling me a heretic for following scripture alone over Roman Catholic theology and tradition. And uh, one of them posted a meme that says, you know, accusing me of being a Protestant. Obviously, I'm not a Protestant. I think Protestantism, Protestantism is just as wicked as Roman Catholicism. Because Protestants have also persecuted true biblical Christians. But they're calling me a Protestant. They're saying that one of them posted a meme that says, uh, Protestantism is founded upon scripture alone, but Roman Catholicism is founded upon sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and this third thing. I don't know how to pronounce it. So they're basically making fun of people who follow scripture alone over vain man-made traditions of Roman Catholicism and Protestantism and Orthodoxy. Um, so here's the thing, is that in the past, in the Middle Ages, uh, people like me used to get burned at the stake for following scripture over Roman Catholic traditions. It was actually against the law for anyone to own a copy of the Bible in their language. The, the Roman Catholics had Latin Bibles, but only that they, they said that only the priests can interpret the Bible. See, to Roman Catholics, they, they actually think it's heresy for the regular common man to interpret the Bible for himself. They think that only the priests can interpret the Bible for them. So I get called a heretic for going by what they call sola scriptura, scriptura which is uh, scripture alone. And they also call me a heretic for having my own personal personal interpretation of the Bible and not going by what the man of God says, that the priest, the holy, you know, holy Catholic priest. But the Bible makes it very clear that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, all that kind of stuff. And the Bible makes it clear that no scripture is of any private interpretation. So um, I don't have to go to some Catholic church and, and have the priest, you know, read verses and, you know, twist verses to defend, defend their unbiblical vain tradition. Like, here's the thing, is that the reason why, it actually makes sense if you think about it, why Roman Catholics don't follow scripture alone, because most of what they believe and do can't be found or backed up by scripture. Like, where, where in the Bible did Peter become a pope? You know, can we get a chapter and verse on that? Where in scripture are we told to bow down and pray to Mary? And they'll say, oh, we're just venerating her. Uh, chapter and verse, please. Where are we told to venerate Mary? Where are we told to put her on this pedestal? You know, where in Scripture are we told to bow down the statues of Mary? In fact, we're forbidden to bow down the statues. You know, Exodus chapter twenty, verse four. You know, don't. It, it makes it very clear. We don't bow down to graven images. We don't bow down to statues and, and images. So, not only are is it not biblical, we're for, for, we're forbidden from doing that. So. Um, also, where in Scripture are we told to have cathedrals and all that kind of stuff? And, and where is the Mass found in Scripture? Uh, I thought the sacrifice of Christ was finished. I, I didn't know there was an unbloody continuation of the sacrifice. Where is that in Scripture? When Jesus on the cross died, he said, it is finished. He didn't say, oh no, no just continue it in a, in a bloody, unbloody sacrifice, you know. And, and where is the wafer found in Scripture? Last time I read Scripture, which is something the Roman Catholic Church doesn't want me to do, Last time I read the Bible, the bread represents his body. It's in, it represents his body, but nowhere in Scripture is it to say that it's his physical body. That's heresy. No, where is that in Scripture? Where, where did Christ say, hey, eat my physical body? That's cannibalism. That's not biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is found in the, in the Holy Bible, not in some traditions of men. Because the Catholic Church, they believe that the... Um, church is an e is equal in authority to God's word. And I asked these Roman Catholics, hey, you know, what happens if the church contradicts the Bible? They said, oh, the church never contradicts the Bible. Right. If the church doesn't contradict the Bible, then how can they ban, how can they burn you at the stake for reading the Bible then? Why are they so afraid of people reading the Bible? It's because they do contradict the Bible. You see, where in scripture are we told to pray to Mary? Where in scripture are we told to kiss icons and pray to saints? Where is that? That's paganism. That's not biblical Christianity. Notice how the pay and where are we where in scripture are we told to pray hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with me all that kind of stuff just chant chanting it over and over again where is that in scripture can we get a chapter and verse please and whenever I ask them for a chapter and verse they just say oh you're a, you you heretic you scripture alone heretic solo scriptura you know it's it's kind of you know, it's sad at the same time that they've been duped into thinking that this these unbiblical traditions 
many of which are actually condemned in scripture too, like bowing down to statues, you know, venerating Mary. You know, they call it the Queen of Heaven, uh, chapter and verse, please. Where is she called the Queen of Heaven? In fact, the only mention of any kind of Queen of Heaven is actually a, a pagan Babylonian goddess. So it's that, the, the term Queen of Heaven in the Bible is actually in a negative light because it, it's in reference to a demonic Babylonian entity. And also, funny as Roman Catholics, they'll say that, oh, we saw apparitions of Mary. Again, chapter and verse, please. Where, where, is, where, is, where does it say that Mary comes back as an apparition? I'll tell you what those are. You know this, this Lady of Fatima or whatever she's called? They, they, claim this, they claim that Mary came down, like, came down to the specter, to these children, and told them to pray the rosary. Um, that wasn't Mary. Because if, the, if it was Mary, she wouldn't say to pray the rosary. Because the rosary is found nowhere in scripture. So even if that was Mary, she wouldn't be saying praying the rosary. No, that, that Mary apparition, the Our Lady of Fatima... That's a, that's a demonic entity right there. That's a demon masquerading as an angel of light. The Bible says that Satan, even Satan, can come as an angel of light. So, um, once you die, you either go to heaven or hell. You don't come back to earth as apparitions. That's, that's found nowhere in the Bible. That's found nowhere in the text of sacred scripture. Those Mary apparitions they see are demons. They're devils. And if it was Mary, she wouldn't be telling them to pray the rosary. Because what, chapter and verse, where is that in scripture? And how they say how these statues are weeping and that kind of stuff. Again, chapter and verse, where is that in scripture? Where are we told to have statues of, of Jesus? And also, funny thing, you know, you wonder why they have a crucifix? Because the crucifix is basically symbolizing Christ continually suffering on the cross. Because in their mind, every Sunday at the Mass, or I think it's Saturday, I don't know, I don't really care. At every Saturday at the Mass, they're essentially crucifying Christ every, every week at the Mass. It's an unbloody continuation of the sacrifice. So essentially every week they're crucifying Christ over and over again. So it makes sense why they have a crucifix because in their mind Christ is just continuing to suffer on the cross. And by the way, the Orthodox do the exact same thing and many Protestants do the exact same thing as well. Uh, again, how is this biblical Christianity? Jesus Christ said it is finished. Once he came once, that was it. Saved. Not, not being saved, not, not, not working your way to heaven. No, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Acts 16, 31. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. John 6, 47. This is Jesus speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. You know, Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. You see, if you could work your way to heaven, then why did Jesus die on the cross? I, Jesus saves us. We don't save ourselves. Understanding salvation is understanding that God saves us. We don't save ourselves. God saves us. And understanding salvation to all the people who reject eternal security is understanding that God controls your salvation. You don't control, like, if you have to do something to keep yourself saved, that means you're saved by works, essentially. And not to mention Catholics, they deny eternal security. Because Catholics, they, they have to continually do good works for their salvation. They believe that they must attend Mass, they must eat the Eucharist, as a way to keep themselves saved. So it's all, it's all, it's all a works-based system. It's not trusting in Christ alone for salvation. It's trusting in, you know, there's these unbiblical traditions for salvation. You know, um, Christ said that, you know, John 3.16, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And there's scripture after scripture after scripture, you know, that talks about what we're saved by faith. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Galatians, the book of Galatians, it says we're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So, where in scripture is like the mass, Mary worship, and they'll say, oh, we're not worshiping Mary. No, when you bow down to statues of her, when you pray to her, when you, you know, venerate her, when you pour holy water on her and burn incense under her. And by the way, where are we told to burn incense? To God, you know. But anyway, when you do that to, to her, that is worship by biblical standards. And uh, making the sign of a cross, like, again, script, chapter and verse, please. Um, when you worship God, you don't just worship God how you want to worship God. You worship God how He told you to worship Him. And if God never told you to make a sign of the cross when you worship Him, don't do it. It's not biblical. I mean, it's just common sense, people. Scripture should be your final authority. Not, you know, infallible. And they'll think that, oh, they'll say, oh, the papacy is infallible. No, it's not. If the papacy is infallible, then how come they're constantly changing their doctrine? 
How come back in the 1990s they were against homosexuals, now they're for homosexuals? I thought they were infallible. And how come, if they're infallible, how come they're afraid to give people a copy of the Bible during the Middle Ages? If they're infallible, if they're, you know, like the word of, voice of God, you know, the mouthpiece of God on earth, and the mouthpiece of Christ on earth, if the Pope is the mouthpiece of Christ, then how come they would burn people at the stake for owning a copy of the Bible in their language? What are they afraid of? You know, if the, if the church can't contradict the Bible, then why, why are they afraid of people reading the Bible? Because they know that, that it does contradict the Bible. You know, where in Scripture is the Mass, you know, the Mass, supposed to be... A, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. Where in Scripture are we told to continue the sacrifice of Christ? It's finished. It's done. There is no continual sacrifice. Where And where is holy water found in Scripture? We have anointing oil, but we don't have holy water. You know... And by the way, we're not supposed to make images of, of Jesus. You know, I have these paintings of Jesus and Jesus on the cross. No, we're, we're told not to make images of God. It's a sin to make images of, of Jesus. We don't know what Jesus looked like. The, the earliest known, you know, painting of Jesus from, from the Catholic Church or Orthodox Church was like hundreds, was made, like this is the earliest known painting, was made hundreds of years after Christ. So, they don't know what Christ looked like. It wasn't like they had a camera that could take a picture of it. No, and the Bible tells us doesn't make doesn't tell us what Christ looked like. The reason why the Bible doesn't tell us what God looked like is because God does not want us making images of Him and bowing down to that. Because God knew that if He told us what Jesus looked like, then then that we would make images of Him and bow down to Him and, and idolatry basically. Of course, the Catholics they do it anyway and make a false image of Jesus. Um, Jesus was not a white man, for as far from what I know. I mean. He wasn't a black man either. You got these black Hebrew Israelite weirdos who say that he wasn't a, he was a black man. You know that's not that's that's not correct either. He was from the Middle East. He wasn't a black man. Um, funny, is the, you know, not not to get too off topic, but these black Hebrew Israelites they're just obsessed with skin color. I mean, they're heretics, obviously. They're racists, and they're you know they're they're gonna burn in hell if they don't get saved. They're not they're not saved. Uh, they they think their race saves them. They're 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 gonna die and go to hell, but. And I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying that's the reality of it. But, basically, we're not to make any images of Jesus. In fact, we're not, we don't have to celebrate his birth on December 25th either. You know, Christmas, Christ Mass, that's where it comes from, Christ Mass. You know, uh, we can celebrate Jesus any day of the week. You know, we don't have to go to Sunday to worship Jesus. So, I'll leave it off with this. So, Roman Catholicism... Protestantism, Protestantism, Orthodoxy, none, none of these are Biblical Christianity. None of this is. Um, all three forms, apostate forms of Christianity, have all persecuted true Christians who followed Scripture alone. Oops. My camera moved. Follow Scripture alone over, you know, these vain traditions of Catholicism and Orthodoxy. So, that's the thing. So, Real biblical Christians follow scripture as their final authority, not traditions of men. Oh, weird, thought I saw something, but anyway, not traditions of men. Listen, if you're a Christian, if you can't find it in the pages of scripture, don't worship, don't do it to worship God, certainly. If you're, if you own a church, if you're a pastor of a church, if, you, if what you're doing isn't found in the pages of scripture, don't do it. Okay, I'll leave it off with that. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.